art can change our future. Travel with me, artist John Dyer and artist Joanne Short. Be inspired by endangered environments, plants and animals, and learn about tribal culture. Paint, connect, exhibit and change. It's a last chance to paint. The predator-proof bomber we are at today is a predator-proof bomber is a homestead that has been uh, fenced and fortified using a chain link fence. So all, all we've added in is the chain link fence. The thorny acacia is what the Maasai used to traditionally use to pre de prevent predators from coming in. That keeps the people safe and it keeps the wildlife out, which uh, encourages coexistence between people and wildlife. So these girls have just been out and collected water and that's how they bring it back to the boma. I would like firstly to take you inside of the village uh, to have a Maasai dance. So for now, uh, that's the end of our coming dance. As you see, the jumping of the men is a competition between each other. So the more you jump, the more ladies you could have for the group. And uh, you see the village, it is in a circular form. And uh, this closure here, this is where we put the carrots during the night time. Right now they went for the grassy one. And the small pantry, that is the, where we put the ships and goods. And uh, as you see, uh, we put the calves because we do milk them. And uh, we drink the milk of a cow when the cow is alive. Then uh, we drink the blood of cow and milk. That's our main food, meat, blood and milk. And uh, we drink the blood of a cow when the cow is alive. And uh, we have two woods we use, whereby we tie the neck of a cow then we find the main vein, then after we tie the main vein, you find it, then shoot it, then the blood coming out, we mix it together with milk, then we drink as our breakfast. So that's our first thing we do in our community. So that's a very, that's a very sustainable way of, of feeding, and um, presumably it, it's very quick for the cow, that doesn't hurt the cow it very much. It don't. And so it doesn't hurt the cow, and how, quickly does the does it heal on the neck of the cow when when you puncture the cow yeah does that heal very quickly yes it will just take one day then we'll be healed for one day right now we have like two years without rain so because we have the swampy areas where some water there is there and some uh, swampy we take the cows over there to graze them over there so right now as you see we have that difficulties and our cows they go very far for finding for grasses and do you ever lose the cows to, to lions uh, or do you ever have problems with um, elephants? I noticed the boma has a fence, Is that to, that's to keep the community safe. Uh, before we get the fence we have a problem for the lions but for right now as we have the fence we don't have any problem including the lions, uh, lion, hyena, they don't come into the village. And then I would like to show you the traditional way of making fire. Uh, fire. Mm. We must say we don't we don't use large, uh, matchbox lighters, so we use only two woods to get fire. This is a hardwood and this is softwood. So the friction in between 
a piece of ash will drop on the elephant dung, and then uh, we have the fire. Wow. The reason why we use elephant dung is because they are non ruminant They are easy to catch fire. So I'm going to show you practically how we make fire. And evening, <coughs> we make a very big fire. Outside of the village, then the women come with a piece of wood and burn and transfer to their houses. So one fire is enough for the whole village. Make sure you are pushing it. Push it. Oh, push it down. It push it down to create friction. Enter. Okay, good, good, good. Oh my goodness. Good, good. Just continue. Just continue. And down. Come up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 Good. 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 I won't have bruised hands. You have no. Okay, You're ready. It's ready. It's ready. Fire's ready. All on my own. Did yeah. you see how I did that? <laughs> all on my own. <laughs> no help at all. Yeah. I make fire. You make fire. I did a thing. I yeah. made fire. Yes. <laughs> I did a thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, don't do this at home in the playground. Bad idea. No, no, no. Only with experts from the Maasai tribe. Don't, don't try this one. At home. Do not try this one at home. Look, I did a thing. Yeah. You helped. You made fire. You helped do it. I hindered doing a thing. Oh, that's really hot. <laughs> And so, we are being led by our chairman, the chairman of the bomber, the big mega bomber. So he's the one who's going to lead us to see the traditional Maasai house. So the burning of the cheese, uh, this one was uh, discovered by our grand grandfathers. And uh, why we burn our cheese are uh, to prevent the eye illness. And some people, they just pretend they are the Maasai and they are not the real Maasai. So for you to be a Maasai in the community, you sh should be have to be born the cheese. How old would you be when you have the, the marks on your cheeks? What sort of age? When you are two years old, that's the time you burn the cheese. Yeah. Another thing we do in our community, you see some people have their long ears, they have been pierced. And the gentleman right here, he has been... Uh, Pierced the years, we was having a conflict between Tanzania and Kenya. For us to differentiate the people of Kenya and Tanzania, we was having the people who known as the Mangat from the Tanzania. So for us to differentiate our people, you should have to pierce their ears. But this one has been coming and stop it because uh, most of our people went to school and the rules and regulation of the school, they were not allowing the people to pierce their ears. Just to explain the uh, interesting head <laughs> adornment, this is so that we can see because it's very, very dark inside the, the house. So we've got the torches to help us see what we're doing. This, as you see over here, down for us, these are mattress, this is a cow skin. Yeah, this is cow dung. And this is elephant cross. Mind your head. I don't leave you. Come in. Now you can stand up. Stand up? Yeah. Yeah. I turn this off. Yeah. Off. No, come, come. John, we are here. Okay, so. You can switch off your light to see how it looks like. And our houses is a waterproof, so no rain coming inside. So that would be an energy saving stove, uh, an earthen energy saving stove, wood stove. So what they will do, they will mold it into the ground and then it would use more firewood than the open. You can see this one, it will be open firewood, so it would use more firewood. But when they would use that one, they would use maybe two, just maybe two of these, or even just one of these, then it would save firewood. Uh, they are yet to do it. They will do it once there is rain and they can have some mud. They will just mold it into the earth and make an energy-saving wood stove. Yeah. 
That's fantastic. That's yeah. really interesting. Mm. And how mm. Bonfree are helping the community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So much. But also that shows you if we gave them this this year, last year it hasn't rained. They haven't been able to mold it in. Uh, it's all just showing how much the their livelihoods are changing and how much the environment is changing. You know, because just the little lack of rain. Yeah. They can't mold that. Yeah. 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 So. And it's... And as you can see, they they need the firewood here, but there's not even much to cook. So all all these are the effects of the drought that's currently ongoing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have a way of lighting the room, or you it's just always dark like this? It is always dark. We do use uh, the fire to light the house. So I'm just starting to paint in the Boma where the Maasai live. The first thing I always do is to put the background down. I'm using acrylic paints on canvas. So I've put in the sky in and then I'm going to put the mountains in. Behind there somewhere is Mount Kilimanjaro but we can't see it today. Um, so I'm just going to put what I can see and I'm using a, a purple or you could use a dark blue or any, any deep colour, greys, whatever you've got to hand just a, a darker tone. So when I set out painting, I, I, I look at what's in front of me and I also start to try and feel for the subject, so what I experienced earlier today. And I start to look at it in terms of a painting. So I'm not gonna paint it exactly as it is. I will make some changes because it's a painting, not a photograph. So I'm just working out what colors will work. There's a lot of earth colors. If you have a look over there, there's a lot of earth colors. So that's quite a challenge, but we can paint them any colors we like but I, I want to be relatively honest to, to what we're painting. I'm gonna start with some Naples yellow, some white, start to bring this in here, so start to develop the houses. So I'm using acrylic paint, as I said, and this dries really fast out in the, the heat. So that's a blessing, but it can also be difficult because I've got to make instant decisions. However, I can go over the top of it. It's not dissimilar to your poster paints um, at, that you use at school. And some schools will have acrylic paint, which would be really great to use. But any form of any form of painting or drawing where you can connect to this subject, make it personal, pop it on the fridge at home, 20 years later, you're still telling the story of the Maasai, and that's really good for us all. So what I'm doing now, I've got the background down, the roughly background down. I'm now starting to build out the homes where the Maasai families live. And there are these huts that are made with cow dung and elephant grass. Uh, so they've got elephant grass on the roof and cow dung walls um, with some twigs and wood to hold it together. So I'm trying to, trying to discover the colours that will work here. So I'm not doing it exactly as it is because my painting won't work. So feel free if you're going to paint a Maasai village, a boma, feel free to use the colours that work for you. So, and you might have bright oranges, you might have pinks, you might have really nice yellows. Use those, it's a piece of art. So the next point is I'm just looking at the way these uh, houses in the boma are constructed and there's some lovely lines, horizontal lines, uh, which are structural. And I'm, so I'm just putting in the shapes that I'm seeing in the bomas, the, the cracked earth of the, um, uh, of the side and the shadows, but I'm not painting it brown and just pale, I'm making it a painting, I'm making it colourful, and I'd like you to make it colourful too. One of the Maasai uh, tribe has just come up to see me and he's agreed that I can paint him, or try to paint him. So I'm just starting with some basic red shapes and I'll go in with, the, with, with, with that. So I'm just going to, I've got the wrong colour paint, but I'm going to use it to draw out where, roughly where the arm is on this and then I'll go back and go over the top because it obviously doesn't want to stand in the sun for too long. So I'm just going to sketch this out. Now I'm wearing sunglasses to protect my eyes. Um, that makes everything a bit darker but when I go back in it will, should all look good, should pop. So I'm just going to put this in. I need to get the angle of this chap's head. So I'm going to draw a central line up, slight angle. This is where the head's going to be. And the shoulder is there, this is the dark area. This is great. We've got the Maasai children, look at them.
So this is their home. So where I'm painting and what you're painting in your schools all around the world, you're, you're painting their home. So this matters, the, the climate, the environment, pollution, things we do help to keep these guys safe and well. And yeah, that's what matters. And because they have these beautiful robes, I just need to roughly, not, it's not supposed to be completely accurate. It's just to capture the essence of the subject. My painting's progressing really well now. We've got less than half an hour before we need to leave the Boma um, to allow the families and the children to settle down for their family life so we don't intrude any further. So it's got really quite windy here at, at the Boma, so I swapped to another microphone. I'm just putting on the final touches to my painting. We've only got about 20 minutes left before we need to go to let these children settle in with their families so we're not too much of a distraction. So I'm just using some pale paint to paint the thorns on the acacias. Look at them. They're so cute. And the, the children dressed in, dressed in their normal clothes, as I said, they've been at school all day. Big shout out to Miss Leslie at Wells Cathedral School, who I know is running Precious Africa uh, with the children in a lunchtime club. So thank you so much for that. So I finally finished my painting for the day. I need to pack up to go. I'm just gonna sign it. So I've just got some white paint. I'm gonna put my name uh, over here. It's been such an exciting day, we've had a great time, we've been made to feel honoured, honoured to be here, they've made us feel so welcome and it's such an exciting time.